And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple. Coming to coming to us from coming to me from the from a land of shared suffering when it comes to when it comes to old man winter and creator of the upcoming super powered system Metroville which is cur which is cur which is cur which has managed to which is getting pretty is getting pretty damn close to its goal I had to, I had to double check to make sure my eyes weren't trick weren't tricking me because of well currency conversions the <laughs> one and only Tyler Elliott how are you doing today man Hello. or tonight good yeah. Um yeah, we're getting pretty close. I think we're at ninety two percent now, roughly, is what my math tells me. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Oh. Um Yeah, we're doing pretty good. It is cold, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. And granted it could it could be worse. We could be having an, we could be having the second coming of the polar vortex. Yes. Yep. I don't know if you were smack dab in the middle for that, but I was, and I'd rather I'd rather not do that. Yeah, it wasn't a, was not a fun time. That's mm -hmm. for sure. I didn't get the worst of it, but no. Although on the plus side, when it comes to all the snow, I look at it and I go, "Hey, free ammo." <laughs> but it's usually tradition around here alongside all the drinking, and more drinking, to go into the humble beginnings of a sort. So, walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what made it stick. Um, that's an interesting question. So, the first time I ever played a role-playing game, as probably is similar to most people, was D&D uh, &D 5th Edition. Um... And it was one of my friends said, hey, like, I, I, I'm a big fan of board games. Mm -hmm. So one of my friends said, hey, you're a fan of games. Let's do this thing. And so I was like, sure, I'll give it a shot. Um, so we we got together, me, him, and eight other people, mm -hmm. which, as you can already tell, was a disaster. Yeah, eight uh. <laughs> eight people at eight people at one table with one with probably one GM. I'm assuming that's like yep. herding cats. Yes, and it was all of our first time playing. Oh, that uh. well, now now we've got a trifecta from hell, as Lewis Black would say. And uh, so yeah, that didn't end well. We had one session, and it it didn't go any further than that. Uh, fast forward three more years in the future. And I'm playing another game. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm play I, we uh, it's D and D fifth edition again, um, but this time with four players and a and a DM. So you and, learned. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It was and it was fun. Uh, I have not played fifth edition since then because I've uh, sort of moved on past that system. Mm -hmm. Um. I had that it has some flaws that I don't like, but we don't have to get too deeply into that at the moment. Um, and ever since then, that's that was about two years ago now. Mm -hmm. I've been playing an assortment of games everywhere from Pathfinder Second Edition to Fate to Burning Wheel. Uh, playing in a cyberpunk game right now i'm assuming uh, cyberpunk red red yeah uh and of course working on metroville mm -hmm. now jumping from D, D to go to going straight into supers that's one that's one heck of a leap and yeah yeah to that to that end i'd like i'd be i'm a bit curious as to as to what were your introduction when it came to supers games came in um so honestly the it was trying to play 
what was it? I think it was masks. Mm-hmm. Masks and masterminds, I think it's called. Uh, mutants and masterminds. Mus- mutants and masterminds. That's the one. Yeah, masks is a different one, I think. Anyways, oh I was, yeah, I was trying to... Ma- masks is a P- Ma- if the only masks I know of is masks the new generation, and that's yes. a PBTA thing. Right. Yeah, I have not. I haven't played that one yet. Uh, but I have. I did read the rules. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah, I tried to play mutants, uh, mutants and masterminds, and it just it didn't really do what I wanted it to, what I wanted out of a superhero game. So for some context, I am a big, big fan of comic books and uh, comic book movies. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it just didn't have that feeling of being, being super really. And like the, the powers were felt very limited compared to what I w- hoped. Mm-hmm. Um, right, like if you watch a superhero movie or you read a superhero comic book, you're the heroes' powers don't they don't have moves that they do right? They 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 just have a power and they can do whatever they want with that power. Um, mm-hmm. and that sort of was the the goal behind Metro Bill. Um was to make a game that had more flexibility and freedom. Mm-hmm. Um, which also kind of stemmed from my experience in in other role-playing games like D&D and Pathfinder, where same thing. Like, it was weird to me uh, that these games were touted as, you can do anything. Uh, and then the the whole resolution of of actions was especially in combat. It's like you hit them, but it's but I never felt like I was hitting them the way that I wanted to, right? Like I could never go for a a gut shot or go for like the uh, the specific target on a on a monster or anything like that. It just it was just you roll the dice and you hit them. So. Mm-hmm. Trying to get that creativity during play in there was was really a big thing for me. Yeah. Um, with that, with that kind of thing in mind, since you've since since it sounds like you've dipped into a into at least read at least reading a few um, a few supers games, mm-hmm. I'd like to I'd like to drop a few names and if if they're um, a supers game you're familiar with in some form. Mm-hmm. Um. I suppose, I suppose one one of the bigger you heard, we already mentioned mutants and masterminds, but um, champions. I actually i I have not played champions. Mm-hmm. Um, I I've heard about it. I actually haven't had a chance to read it yet either. Um, DC heroes. Um, no, I haven't. I haven't played that one or or read that one yet either. I, I've looked in the two that I, two main ones that I looked into were masks and uh, mutants and masterminds. All right. Um, and for me, for me personally, I had my I had my own issues with mutants and masterminds. Mainly, the fact that if I wanted to if, that I would have to tread very carefully if I wanted to run a street level game throughout mm-hmm. because of how the leveling system works. It's yep. hard to maintain being a street level. And still have people leveling up, right? Um, it's largely largely because my inspiration was the um, was the Heroes for Hire, right? Like the Luke Cage, the uh, Daredevil, that kind of. Yeah, I didn't want. I didn't want to. Br- I w- I didn't want to bring a bunch of newbies into um, national level threats. It was like no. Right. No, you're de- no, you're dealing with you're dealing with ge- you're dealing with get you're dealing with gangs and ba- and yeah. bank robbers for for this. Yeah. Oh. So I'm not, I don't like thro- I don't like throwing people into the deep into the deep end of a pool and just saying swim, damn it. <laughs> oh. But since I since I end up asking this a lot with pe- with people who are comic books, for you were you more of a Marvel guy or more of a DC guy, or were you 
or were you third party? So growing up, I was Marvel mm -hmm. for the most part. Uh, like I was a big fan of Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. uh, he was probably number one. Uh, but DC was also pretty high on the list considering Batman was probably one of my more favorite uh, heroes. Again, those street level heroes that I, I tended to gravitate towards. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of the Captain Americas or the, uh, you know, the uh, Superman or the Flash or any the, of those. Na the national or planet tier um, heroes. Yeah, yeah, I liked the more human stories. Oh, um, it's not. It's not to say you can't. You can't tell human stories with, say, Superman. I'd, I'd say. Um, no. All Star Superman is an example of actually doing that, but. You have to take they, you have to take a certain approach and yeah, they're um, definitely fewer and further between than uh, in the other heroes. I'd say I'd say it's more I'd say it's more of a case a case of trying to. I remember I remember when um I remember when Brian Michael Bendis was assigned to write sewer, to write um Superman and that was already flashing a, that was already giving me warning signs because I do not have the best history with Brian Michael Bendis's work. Um, I still I still have beef with him for Avengers Disassembled. That was an absolute train wreck. Um, but his his particular run with Superman, I think, was a flop because he was trying to write Mar he was trying to write Marvel like stories with a character that didn't mm -hmm. fit. Mm -hmm. um, you have to look at a character like Superman the way you would a Greco Roman hero. Yeah. In, f in fact, um, All Star Superman. I think tr I think um, was trying to do a twelve labors of Hercules with Superman, which is probably why that worked. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can I can certainly I can certainly see that. And just out of curiosity, did you ever dip? Did you ever dip any into into Image when that blew up? Uh, I have some. Uh, Image was. Image was never on my on my highest tier list. I was more like if if I was gonna go third party, it was Dark Horse. Oh uh, yeah, the adaptation guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, in fact, I'm reading uh, right now. I'm reading Black Hammer, mm -hmm. which is which is Dark Horse, mm -hmm. uh, which is a pretty cool series. Different take on the superhero genre. Yeah. Um. Now, with with that kind of thing in mind, what gave you the idea to start to begin work on Metroville? Was it just wanting to do a supers game that would do that would do what you wanted instead of having to force it through a different system? Yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, at that point, like when I started making Metroville, mm -hmm. I was very new into the hobby. Um. Like, I had only played a couple of games. Uh, and I was, like... I don't know. I just... It it, it felt pretty natural. Like, we, we just started playing, making rules as we went. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually it sort of coalesced into something. Like, right now we have... 30 some odd powers in the book uh when we first started we had maybe five or six because those were the ones that we used right and then we slowly built more out the more we used them and the more like we built the world and built the game mm -hmm. now with that with that in mind one of the first things that i noticed is that you're using a d6 die pool um mm -hmm. at the and it's it's a setup I've it's a setup I've seen plenty my for, my fair share of times, attribute plus skill and die fours and yep. fours and hires counts as hit counts as hits to compare yep. the hits to a target number. Um, if I play if I play word association with this system, a lot of people I know are gonna end up thinking of things like Shadowrun. So yeah, I'll so I'll get I'll get the obvious joke out of my system. How many pounds of dice? <laughs> <laughs> um, the most dice we have ever rolled for a single roll at the table so far has been thirteen. Okay, that's reasonable. In all of, in all of our playtests, and that was when we were 
trying to play test maximum powers. Mm-hmm. Um, maximum is a it's soft max, but definitely a reasonable uh, yeah. maximum. Now, in that in that same in that same vein, um, there are there are some games that utilize a die pool that have that have some sort of um, extra mechanic regarding mm-hmm. regarding certain results. Mm-hmm. Um, to use Shadowrun again as as my example, if you if you end up if you end up succeeding but you get a certain amount of ones, okay. then it's then it's referred to as a glitch, where you succeed mm-hmm. but something else happens. Mm-hmm. Um, I call these kind of systems and but dice. Right. Right. Do you have a sim- do you have a similar thing with within your system or is it strictly a pass fail setup? Um it's not strictly pass fail but there are no like if you get this number of ones this number of sixes etc there there is degrees of success similar to say uh like PBTA. Mm-hmm. But uh or or fate um but it there are no no special numbers. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the big um, elephants in the room that can happen with superhero systems mm-hmm. is a lot is a whole lot of point by and a whole lot of point basis. Okay, which can result in a bit of analysis paralysis in some systems. Okay, with, I see what you're trying to say. Yeah, with um. With Metroville, are you going full on point by when it comes to character creation? Uh, yes, but uh, that being said, at the start of the game, you get six points to put into your five stats. Mm-hmm. Well, six if you count stamina. Um, so you get you get six points to put into your six stats. Mm-hmm. One of your stats is going to be the primary stat because it's going to be the one that your power primarily uses, right? Say your power is super speed, agility is going to be your primary stat. Mm -hmm. So you're going to crank that up as much as you can at the start. And then beyond that, uh, you'll you'll probably have three points left over after you crank that. So you can put three points into any of the other five stats. uh, In my experience... It hasn't had that much analysis paralysis because the the stats themselves are less important than the powers. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is some level of uh, some level of paralysis in terms of just there being a number, a significant number of choices, mm-hmm. uh, specifically with the powers, because there are over thirty of them in the game. So. You know, it's in the in the book. I go over a little bit of how we um, we've developed over time a good way of building a character in the system. Mm-hmm. We typically start with the character theme, and we find we found that if there's a solid theme, like you want to build Ant Man but different, or I want to build the Human Torch but different. Or you have like a different or whatever theme you want to b- build off of, um, it becomes a lot easier to pick your your stats and your powers. Mm-hmm. Now, so oh, go, yeah, go. so it's, no, uh, just and and another thing is we don't have a significant number like it. We're it's not really a skills based game, like uh, like a Pathfinder or like a. Uh, um even a burning wheel mm. uh so you don't not all of your roles are going to be uh be affected by your character creation sig- like significantly mm-hmm. now one thing i notice is that you're obviously you're going classless i'd say i'd say it's almost impossible to do a class based system with uh, with supers simply because yeah. Of how, simply because of how much you'd have to accommodate, yeah. And but instead, you're going with origins. Yeah. So I'd, I'm be cu- I'm curious what origins entails. Is it like a starting package? It yeah, it is basically a starting package, right? So you got uh, we've got seven of them. Mm-hmm. Um, 
any ranging everywhere from genetically enhanced, because uh, the word mutant is a little taboo, and um, and all the way to uh, like training, right? So like your Batman's your uh, that that level of hero. Um, um, do you have one for gadgeteers? We do. We have. It's called the high tech origin. Um, and so they they make their tech. There's uh, rules around how their their tech is built and what different tech gives gives them. Mm-hmm. Um, they can have like suits of armor. They can have like a la like Iron Man, or they can have uh, they can have just weapons or or tools that they can use. Mm-hmm. Um, and so basically, yeah, these are a starting package. So they tell you what kinds of powers you can use. So, for example, the um, the person who's got the training origin is not going to be able to take telekinesis because they can't train themselves to use telekinesis. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also going to give you the starting uh, modifier for your powers and different ways that your powers can grow and change. Um, so... For another example is uh, we have the experiment uh, slash accident. I kind of group those together because functionally they're the same. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and this is like your um, your Hulk, your Green Goblin type characters. Probably you know, the you've Flash been exposed. Well. Yep, the Flash as well. You've been exposed to gamma rays, ex- whatever mm-hmm. experimental thing, and now you have superpowers. Yep. Um, the way that this one uh, works is your powers are a little bit more free flowing. Like you get to get more powers throughout the game, but your uh, starting powers are maybe a little bit weaker. Because mm-hmm. you, the idea is maybe you just learn them, or they're new to you, or they're not natural, basically. Yeah. Whereas the genetically enhanced. Their powers are innate to them, right? Like these are your uh, X Men type heroes, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they've had them since, you know, teenagers in most cases, um, and so they've had a little bit of time getting used to their powers. But in the same vein, their powers are part of their genetics, mm-hmm. so it's a little bit less free flowing and fluctuating to get new and varied powers. Mm-hmm. Now. With what you brought up with tele- with telekinesis, that does that does raise an interesting that does raise a couple of interesting questions that I wanted to ask. Mm-hmm. The first, the easier one, is what is where in this system would you would you qualify characters whose powers are an inborn tra- an inborn trait and not a mutation? Um, for exa- for example, Martian Manhunter. Uh, there are alien. There is an alien origin as well. Uh, so Martian Manhunter would fall under that. Superman would fall under that. Mm-hmm. Basically, anyone who's not a human and their powers come from their species. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to ask is, because the way you describe it, it sounds like origin origins also determine what po- what powers would probably be would probably be locked off for you. But only for for a couple of them. Yes, most of them are are so. There's two that have powers locked off for them. So the training has powers locked off of them what i what i deem as mental powers mm-hmm. or like the uh the ones that that use your um your willpower and your um and your mind stat rather than your strength or your body and your agility stats yeah. um and then there's the magic users so your doctor stranges mm-hmm. and these uh characters will not be able to take the physical quote unquote um uh, things such as super strength yeah, the the reason part of the part of the thing I wanted to ask in regard to that is, if you look throughout comics, there's plenty of times where where characters will get some form of side grade, um, mm-hmm. some for, some some kind of change to their power set that is te- that is temporary to some degree. The mm-hmm. most famous example in Marvel, of course, being the symbiote suit for Spider Man. Right. Um. Would that be a case of them, of ch- of changing origin or just get or just getting a new power set? How would you end up working something like that in? I think that would be pretty interesting. Um, 
you could as a see and the, this is the the fun thing about metroville as well is it's very very open mm -hmm. um to like kind of let that stuff happen uh so if in in a game that i wanted to that i wanted to run i said okay you've got your heroes and they've got powers and whatever and some alien symbiotes show up mm -hmm. or uh in the case of say blue beetle uh some alien suits alien tech comes onto the earth you could take you could say hey characters you get to take a second origin mm -hmm. and then you can get more powers or whatever associated with that all right that makes i suppose i suppose another example i could use is um captain marvel or um carol danvers right since i would argue that hers is probably an exper or an accident uh cuz she didn't have powers before that correct um the other, the other thing i'm curious about is in is in regard to um powerful but dangerous um power sets and how you'd handle that um a big example i could use it, if you're familiar with him is black bolt of the inhumans mm -hmm. you know just insane sonic powers to the to the point where even whispering can could probably could probably wreck a city block so he has to stay so he has to stay quiet almost all the time that's interesting. Metroville doesn't have a way built in to deal with that yet. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose you could you could homebrew something to work with that. I haven't I haven't thought about that. That's an interesting uh, an interesting concept because there are a couple of heroes that are or and or villains that are uh, that have that sort of thing. Yeah. That that's that's one that's one obvious example. Like I I was tempted to bring up Sentry, but that's a little bit of a de of a deeper cut, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. his particular issues uh, is a little bit hard is a little bit harder to explain. Um, right. I mean, yeah, him, Adam Warlock, all of those. Whenever you get into whenever you get into the cosmic tier stuff of Marvel or DC, things get weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's to the to the point that. Well, I'm, well, I'm sure plenty. I'm, pretty, I'm sure plenty of comic writers will ar would argue otherwise. With a lot of that cosmic stuff, especially the stuff that Jack Kirby was do was doing, I refuse to believe that they weren't on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely, yeah. There's, I mean, it was the '80s, right? So, <laughs> Se um, in a lot of cases, '70s. So, so there you go, even more. <laughs> but. But keeping that, that brings up that brings up another thing that a lot of I kind of hinted at when talking about the street level thing, and a lot of a lot of supers games tend to struggle with this, and that mm -hmm. is maintain maintaining maintaining a certain a certain power scaling, even as mm -hmm. even as people develop. Right. In the case I mentioned earlier, the struggle of um, keeping a street level team at street level even late into a campaign. Mm -hmm. So, how would you, how would you handle that kind of kind of um, quandary with Metroville? So, since uh, this is probably showing a little bit of Met Metroville shows a little bit of my bias in it as well as as most game systems will of their creators. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer the the lower level games, like mm -hmm. the uh, like if I'm playing Pathfinder, I like levels three to ten. Um, you know, if I'm playing, uh, if I'm playing Burning Wheel, well, Burning Wheel's always low level, so, <laughs> um, I do, I do really enjoy the lower level stuff. So, the way that Metroville works is leveling up happens really, it's not super, it's not particularly slow, you probably gain, uh, a level, or a level every three sessions or so. But the levels don't give you all that much. Every level you get an extra die in your stat. And that's it. No. Um, oh, good. So it's... So it's... Uh, it, it's... It scales, but slowly. So, you know, by the end of a, a campaign, you might still be s street level, depending on how long the campaign is. Mm -hmm. Now, 
something else that I was I was curious about, especially looking at the character sheet, is there there's a t there's a lot of tally marks for yep. heroic tasks and mythic tasks. Is that yep. the primary way that you're gaining what would exactly. be experience in other games? Exactly, exactly. Um, the way that I I describe it in the book is uh, if you're a weightlifter mm -hmm. and you keep lifting five pound weights, you're not going to get any stronger past a certain point. Mm -hmm. So in Metroville, you have to keep performing greater and greater tasks as you level up, and the those tasks are de are denoted as heroic or mythic. Um, and you need a certain level of heroic tasks, a certain number of heroic tasks, a certain number of mythic tasks, depending on uh, what level you're at. And I believe on the last page of the character sheet, it should uh, describe that, uh, the number based on the, the modifier that you're at. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, those little tally marks are to help players keep track of how many they have in each stat. Yeah. Now, with with that in, with that in mind... One other thing, one other thing that I'm curious about, especially since I brought up um, get up gadget the gadgeteer kind of th kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back. Let's go back to that example of Iron Man for a moment. Yeah. Um, throughout the comics, and especially and in particular throughout the throughout season two of the uh, '90s cartoon, we started to see a lot of specialized armors. Right. Ar armors that are armors that are designed for a particular environment, a particular purpose. Um, mm -hmm. You had a bunch of form. Sh you had a bunch of form shifting the way a common writer would, with um, Iron Man in the in season two of the cartoon. And of and of course, there's been there's been variations of the suit up to and including the Hulkbuster armor. Right. Yep. Um, how do you ma how do you manage that how do you manage that kind of thing without having to have a character have multiple character sheets at once. Well, I I did we did do this mm -hmm. in one of the play tests. Uh, one person basically played an Iron Man esque character. Uh, what we called um, an entity legally distinct from Iron Man, and uh, basically how we dealt with it was they had uh they had these powers that like so one of their powers they had super strength and that was the quote like the hulkbuster they had another one which was um they had the create fire power they had one suit that just had flamethrowers on it mm -hmm. um and so these were different suits that they had and if they were wearing a suit they could use that a particular suit they could use that power I think the other, um, the other reason I bring this kind of thing up is I'm assuming you've seen Iron Man three. Uh huh. So you yep. you probably remember that whole, the whole armor swapping in the in the final battle of that film. Yep. Which that is something that is something that one of that one of my students had att had, had attempted to do, and while I was able to pull it off with mutants and masterminds, I'm not going to yep. claim it was easy. Yeah. I I wouldn't claim it's easy in Metroville either. They would definitely take some discussion on the part of the DM and the part of the uh, part of the player mm -hmm. uh, as to how that that would function. Yeah. Um. But I'm all for you know creative play within that. Uh, there's nothing in the rules that says it can happen, mm -hmm. but Metroville's rules are loose on purpose. Yeah. And. A final thing when it comes to armor, I, I'm a bit of a fan of a tokusatsu si uh, and um, animated series called Garo. Okay. Which is a, which is a bit of su is a bit of supers with a bit of um, horror. The protagonist in that is known as a Makai Knight who has a set of armor, armor that he's able to utilize to defend himself. The the catch with that armor is that he can only maintain it for. 99.9 .9 seconds. Okay. Now, obvious, obviously, you can't track that in terms of turns, but how would you, how would you track some sort of power that ha that has that grants some sort of boost, but at a but for a limited amount of time? I think that that would probably. Again, I think that that would 
be a, a conversation that the the game master and the uh player would have to have it would probably be a similar situation to that black bolt that we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. metroville doesn't have explicit rules for dealing with really powerful things that have a detriment to them at, at this point all right i can i can get that now on the character sheet i'd also seen a list of traits and a list of talents yeah um what is the what is the difference between the two and what's and what would be the dividing line if somebody wanted to homebrew one or the other okay so uh these are the ta the traits are probably my favorite part of the game despite it being a supers game uh i'm really proud of the the trait system uh but i'll start i'll start with the talents so the talents um they're think of them almost like skills they're they're kind of they're kind of like skills so for example uh one of the so sorry back it up a little bit um there's two types of talents in metroville there's general talents and unique talents general talents there's a list of them in the book um since metroville is, is setting agnostic there the list is pretty exhaustive and some of them won't apply to all situations mm -hmm. um so for example uh we played in a futuristic game and uh, horseback riding, not relevant, but we played in a, uh, in a, uh, and we also played in like a medieval game, spaceship piloting, not relevant. So we just, you know, as a, as a table decided not to take those talents cause it would be dumb. Um, but yeah, so think of the talents as kind of like skills, right? Driving spaceships, riding horses, um, you know, uh, your your knowledge of computer hacking, uh, things like this. Um, the traits mm -hmm. are physical or personal, uh, sometimes economic characteristics. Um, so, for example, uh, you could have a trait that gives you very good eyesight. Mm -hmm. You could have a trait that gives you extra legs. Um, thinking like, uh, we had one, I had a character in one of my playtest games that, uh, that played as a literal spider. And they did this entirely using the trait system, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it, it's th these types of things. You could also, um, in economic status could come with, uh, could come with the traits. So there's a wealthy trait, mm -hmm. which... I encourage people who have the high tech origin to take so that it gives you a reason to have all that tech. Um, then there's also negative traits, which in my opinion is really, really important because superheroes are less interesting to me if, uh, if they're just the best at everything, which is why... I wasn't the biggest fan of Superman growing up or why I wasn't the biggest fan of Captain America growing up mm -hmm. because truth, justice in the American way just didn't, you know, didn't, didn't jive with me at the time. Um, and so having heroes with flaws is really, really important to me. So the way the traits work is they have, uh, they have numbers associated with them values. So, you know, you might get a plus two from a certain trait, and um and a minus two from another trait. The goal is to have zero, sort of like a balance at the end. Mm -hmm. Given that, have you have have you done experimentation regarding how much of a factor min maxing plays into it? Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> one of the um, actually two, two of the people who. Uh, have done a significant number of the playtests for Metroville mm -hmm. are uh, they're known power gamers which is not a good or a bad label but uh, they like to get the most out of their characters mm -hmm. um, which is a thing that you can do in Metroville um, there are certain combinations that are definitely powerful um, taking for example uh there's a there's a trait called uh shoot i forget the name of it at the moment uh because we have it's a bit wordy for a trait name isn't it 
Uh, we have we have something like sixty or seventy traits, so I cannot remember all of them off the top of my head. But uh, basically, the trait uh, gives you a certain bonus on uh, body checks, mm-hmm. and you could take the super strength uh, power. And now all of a sudden, you can lift or carry or throw so much more than you could otherwise. Mm-hmm. It it sort of compounds. Um, so if you want to do that, you can do that. Um, if you want to be a more balanced uh, character and have like, you know, you have your super strength power, but you take um, some more intelligence based or some more charisma based uh, traits, you're more you're open to do that as well. Mm-hmm. So, yes, there is room for that. Um, but I, I will say at the same time, that person who tried to do their uh their min maxing which like i said is is successful to a certain point found that they had all these positive traits that they really liked and really gave them bonuses but they had to take an equal number of negative traits and so that reduced the level of extreme power that they were able to feel mm-hmm. now i know you meant i know you mentioned the set the um the fact that you the fact that you're aiming for more street level and mm-hmm. that brings me to how you ha- how um you handle combat and more importantly the squishiness of ca- of um characters is it going to be a case where unless you've got a certain build around it you're going to go down in a few hits um you'll go if you're so if you're fighting uh, people who are roughly your power level, like have roughly the same modifiers as you and roughly the same stats as you, attributes wise. Mm-hmm. It'll the combat will last maybe four or five rounds at most. Um, if you uh, and you know if if they're if both sides are going for kill shots, right? If both sides are trying to subdue, if you're trying to subdue versus uh kill versus run away there's obviously there's going to be some some wiggle room in there mm-hmm. if you're fighting someone significantly higher or lower level than you the fight's going to be over much quicker uh and that's due to the die pool system mm-hmm. where your roles are pretty much like they're going to be centralized right that's what happens when you have a die pool the more dice you roll the the closer to the mean you're going to get um, so we found that when our heroes were fighting random street thugs, you needed a whole bunch of random street th- thugs in order to pose a threat. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you were fight, but like I said, if you're fighting other super villains, it's, it's going to be an even fight. Mm-hmm. So I would say that the lethality isn't particularly high, but... The danger is always there if you're fighting, if you're fighting characters who are meant to pose a threat to you. Yeah. But I, I doubt you're gonna, I doubt you're gonna pull the old, stu- the old stunt of, um, one of one lucky, one lucky or unlucky roll ends up, ends up meaning that you get wiped. That is soup. That is, I would say that that's probably impossible. <laughs> at least, at, at least at lower levels, um, like. So the way that combat works is you roll your your when when you have your die pool you roll the dice. Uh the number of successes you get is the number of hits you make in an attack. And then the defender does the same thing. They'll roll uh, their die pool for defense and the number of hit the number of successes they get is the number of blocks. Uh so and then you take the difference and that's the damage. Mm-hmm. Um obviously if there's more blocks than hits zero. We don't we don't do negative damage. Um, I heal you with my punches. Um, <laughs> no, uh, and so, you know, if the die pools get large enough and someone rolls zero and someone rolls max, sure, but the odds of that are something like one in two or three thousand. Mm-hmm. So, Of course, yeah. if it if it does happen, I'll, I just I just have to remind everybody at my table 
about one important factor when it comes to the dice gods. It does not matter your, it does not matter your age, race, occupation, sex, whatever. The dice gods hate you. <laughs> they do. Uh, they, but but they are equal in their hatred. It is true. It is true. Now, yeah, for sure. With that kind, with that kind of thing in with that kind of thing in mind, um, is I also saw that you have armor rating on that. Is is yep. armor rate is armor rating the final reduction after all of yep. the hits have been calculated? Yeah, exactly. Armor rating's gonna be pretty low overall because the damage numbers are generally gonna be pretty low. Mm -hmm. Um, like most characters by the end of a campaign will have one or two armor rating. Mm -hmm. Uh the high tech heroes might end up with a little bit more because of their armor. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that's basically what it is for. Yeah. Now when it comes when it comes to whenever whenever it comes to creating at creating enemies in one form or another um mm -hmm. there is the temptation with some games especially ones that have a more uni universalist flair and let's face it the line between universalist and supers games is razor thin yep to have it to have it that um enemy design is a character is a character sheet designed with some slightly changed steps are you taking a similar approach or are you taking a different approach when it comes to creating enemies? Um, so in the, in the core book at the moment, there are a couple dozen, uh, very generic enemies, like your, uh, your thug, your, um, com, like your, like there's criminal, uh, things, there's generic animals in there. Um, there's, um, there's some more fantasy creatures, more science fiction creatures. So I've got like generic aliens in there, mm -hmm. um, things like that. So with a very, very basic stat block, it's got the attributes, it's got the powers and that's it. No talents, no, uh, no anything like that. Some of them do have traits. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it is basically creating a character with less steps. It's creating a character. Most of them aren't going to have talents. Most of them are going to have very few traits. And you don't need to care too much about their backstory and all of that. I, I, can, I can certainly dig that. Now, what are you shooting for as far as the total page count? Uh, it's going to be around 125. Right. With... Most of those being descriptions of the powers. Mm -hmm. And now I I know you I know you I know you're getting at, you're at ninety five percent um completion when it comes to the Kickstarter. But what mm -hmm. are you shooting for as far as a release window? Are you thinking in the Are you thinking in the fall? Um, we're actually uh, hoping for summer. Ooh. Um, because the the game itself, the rules, everything like that is all done for them. Like there are some that are going to be added due to the Kickstarter. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the pledge levels was um, you get to work with me and create a power that gets put in the game. Um, and that's that's been pledged by a couple people already. So that's pretty cool. So we're going to get to add some new stuff into the book. Um, most of the art is already done. I've uh, been talking with the the artist, and most of the art's already done. Mm -hmm. uh, we just need to basically get a layout that works for us. Um, that's we have a layout already, and we're gonna basically do some mild tweaks to it, mm -hmm. and add the the new the new powers, and then we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. This uh, this game has been. Almost three years in the making, so we're excited that uh, that we're almost at the end here. And I, I will certainly be looking forward to seeing what insanity um, comes from comes from the result. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> it's been it's been really fun to play it uh, with our playtests, uh, and so I'm I'm just happy that people 
are going to get to get to enjoy it as well. Mm -hmm. So with with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way up to the temple and enjoy the madness at play here. Thank you for having me. And anytime you see fit to return, whether it's to discuss su whether it's to further discuss supers, or to, or to talk or to talk about how the clone saga was a terrible terrible idea, <laughs> the door is always <laughs> open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!